welcome to Political Capital, the show where Delhi meets the Lal Street. I'm Priyal Gulyani Bhattacharya. The 2014 election cycle has seen a number of highly qualified professionals and technocrats step into the political sphere as candidates across party lines. Joining me now is Shugatav Bose, Professor of South Asian History at Harvard University and now the Trinamool Congress candidate from Jadavpur in West Bengal. Among Professor Bose's recent books is a biography of his great uncle and freedom fighter Subhash Chandra Bose. Uh, thank you Professor Bose for joining us here at Bloomberg TV India. Let me start uh, by asking you, you know, in your as you've been a history professor for a long period of time and now that you're in the midst of this politics and more importantly the upcoming elections uh, many say that these elections are going to be a historic event for india or a watershed event for india do you believe that that is how or do you also uh, agree to that view and if you do uh, why do you think uh, would the, these upcoming elections be very critical as far as India's future is concerned. I agree that uh, these are extraordinary elections. It is probably the most historic election to be held uh, since independence. Uh, what kind of India we want uh, for the future is largely going to be determined uh, as a result of uh, these elections. Uh, what I can see uh, as I look at the political map around the country is that the Indian National Congress is uh, poised to sink to its uh, worst defeat since 1947. The left is in complete disarray. There is one party which seems to be gaining ground in the north and the west of the country. So I think the real battle lines in these general elections will be between the forces of religious majoritarianism on the one hand and the forces of federal unity on the other. That is why I accepted an invitation from the leader of uh, the party in West Bengal to contest these historic, ele historic elections uh, because I do feel that the people of India deserve an alternative uh, in the form of a federal front of powerful regional parties, which I expected to do extremely well in the east and the south of the country. And we want a government that uh, is representative and reflective of the diversity of this country and that all religious communities and all regional linguistic groups uh, feel uh, that they can trust that kind of a central government. But do you uh, feel, Professor, and I will come in terms of the candidature that uh, you're representing, your party and other issues uh, in, in a very short period now, uh, but uh, do you really believe uh, that, you know, we've seen the, the entire talk right now in the country is being or is, uh, you know, is about development, about the issues of development. There have been issues of price rise, inflation, corruption, all that seem to be taking, seems to be taking a center stage uh, in the debate or the dialogue that we see in this Lok Sabha elections. Do you think that we've evolved in terms of, and because you've made this point right now, in terms of secularism and also the issues, uh, do you think that the issues such as development are far more important and therefore they are taking the center stage right now? I do feel that issues of development are extremely important. And in the last two and a half years, uh, after uh, almost a 34-year hiatus, there is a rapid development taking place in the state of West Bengal. And there are many regional parties in the south and the east of the country that have presided over economic development in the last decade. Uh, I think uh, the issue is whether the claims that are being made about a particular model of development uh, stand up to scrutiny or not. And my own view is that the Gujarat model is based on providing subsidies for the rich. And we do need political parties in this country which will stand up for the interests of not just the 70 billionaires that we have, but for more than a billion working people in our country. So yes, development ought to be front and center uh, on our political agenda. But I think that the debate is very skewed in the mainstream media. 
I really do think that there are regional parties which have the priorities right. And remember that our country still is extremely poor. And certain states which are propagating uh, their own record in terms of high growth have less than average achievement in the field of health and education, which really ought to be near the top of our political agenda. Uh, let me also understand with you, you know, you've spent a considerable period of time outside of India. Uh, you've been uh, you've been in the U.S. Uh, and I want to understand, you know, there was this whole question as far as the India story is concerned. And, uh, you know, th there were a lot of aspirations. There were hopes. India was one of the most uh, touted to be the best performing uh, developing countries, uh, in attracting investments, attracting talent and so on and so forth. Uh, but how do you think in the global world the India story has been impacted in the last few years when we are seeing this whole issue as far as the question on our growth, uh, when uh, we are seeing, of course, uh, you know, there is heightened activity and issues of corruption uh, really, you really uh, taking a very big, uh, you know, shape. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, the paralysis, the government policies, etc., that has, that has come to the forefront. How do you see the India story currently as we speak? And do you think this upcoming election would, uh, you know, go in a way to change that? Uh, the India story, uh, as we knew it a few years ago, has completely lost credibility in the world. As you rightly say, I, uh, I have taught uh, abroad uh, for many, many years, but I have kept in close touch with India. I have been coming to India and spending time here uh, over the last uh, few years. Yes, because of uh, high-profile corruption scandals, not least the, the 2G scandal and the coal scam uh, and earlier uh, the Commonwealth Games scandal, uh, our image has been tarnished abroad. And uh, what's more, the lack of governance on the part of the Congress-led UPA government has also meant that nobody believes in the India uh, story. Uh, and I just don't believe it's true that the UPA 1 did better and the UPA 2 uh, did worse, because all of the major corruption scandals that we hear about took place during the period of UPA 1. We just got to know about them during the period of UPA 2. So lack of governance and corruption has really spoiled our image abroad. Uh, and uh, so we do need an alternative. But the question is, what kind of alternative? Do we want an alternative that represents, A, the forces of religious majoritarianism, and B, the interests of the big corporate houses in the country? Or do we want an alternative in the form of a federal front that is bound to emerge after the elections, which will stand for federal unity and for the economic interests of the masses of working people in this country. Uh, our state structure has been over-centralized for far too long. And the Congress party is doing badly at this point because it itself has had a top-heavy structure. It is best to create Indian unity from below. Uh, the states and the regions must be given a larger voice in decision-making at the center. That will give all of the states, some of which are alienated, a better sense of belonging. And I think a somewhat more decentralized structure would also be good for the economy. I'm a historian, and I know that even in periods when India has had relative political decentralization, that has not had any adverse impact either on economic dynamism or cultural vitality. And as we are seeing right now, even, you know, as, as there is so-called uh, claims that have been made about one, the other national party being the front runner overall, uh, or become, uh, and therefore this, there, there are this question mark, but whether will it get the majority numbers, because that will be dependent on what are the key regional forces, whether it's in the south or whether uh, it's uh, states such as like yours, uh, where there is a you know strong uh, regional parties uh, emerging, and therefore, 
do you think that decentralization, as you were pointing out right now, would be the way forward uh, in terms of how do we see in India, if not in the near future or perhaps in these upcoming elections, but going forward, this could be a potential, uh, uh, you know, decentralization of all these uh, all these powers and then uh, emerging into one, uh, which would uh, really see the uh, day of the light. No single party will get a majority in this election. No single party will come even close to getting a majority in this election. So there will have to be a coalition. So what kind of coalition is the question? And yes, I do believe uh, that uh, the re regional parties, particularly of the East and the South, will do extremely well. There has to be some degree of decentralization in the sense of devolving uh, economic powers to the states and also to other entities below the level of the state. But what I am calling for is something different and something more. I am seeking a future when the various regional parties will come together and renegotiate the federal equation in our country. Because the regional parties simply cannot think about their own regions or states anymore. They must come together and uh, offer a cohesive coalition and a coherent policy program at a federal center. Uh, our center has been too unitary, but we have to have a genuine dose of federalism in our country. And I genuinely believe that a free and flexible federal union will prove to be a stronger union of India, both in a political sense and also for our economic prosperity. But let me get specific here. You know, there was this whole issue of the federal front really coming forward. Uh, you had leaders of various uh, political parties, the regional political parties, the strong parties, uh, members coming in together. But that seemed to have really, uh, you know, not really taken shape. Uh, and of course, perhaps there would be aspirations as of leaders that would have come in the way. So clearly that doesn't seem like uh, to be a reality as far as uh, uh, the current state is con uh, current uh, Lok Sabha elections is concerned. Uh, first of all, the federal front that I'm speaking of uh, is very different from the third front uh, that we have uh, seen in the past. Uh, second, No, no, yes, I'm not, I, uh, Professor yes. Bose, I'm not referring to the third front. I'm referring to various political parties that had come around, uh, be it your own uh, party, uh, Mamta Banerjee, there was, uh, of course, uh, Jailalitha's party and other uh, parties that had come around. In that regard, I was wanting to understand that. Yes. Well, uh, Mamata Banerjee, of course, uh, wanted to see a federal front forged before the election, if possible. Uh, it is somewhat unfortunate uh, that a credible alternative in terms of a federal front uh, has not been presented before the election. That would have been desirable. Uh, but the reality of our politics is such at this point that everybody is waiting to see which of the regional parties do best in the different states. And uh, to some degree, uh, electoral politics uh, is a matter of arithmetic. And we will find after the elections that the regional par parties that do really well in some of the states will come forward, sit at the negotiating table, and hammer out uh, a common program. I do know that the leaders of regional parties are in touch with one another, and I'm sure there will be a momentum in terms of the forming of a federal front once the election results are out. Could that momentum, or is there a possibility of that momentum really moving towards the party that emerge, uh, or the national party that emerge, to have more, uh, more numbers uh, in, in the upcoming elections? Could that be a possibility, or you are absolutely ruling out as far as your own party is concerned? So far as uh, the party which has asked me to contest this election is concerned, uh, we are very clear. If you uh, see our symbol, the two flowers, it is based on a line by our great poet Qazi Nazrul Islam, two flowers on a single stem, Hindu and Muslim. 
we believe in equal rights for all of the religious communities in Bengal and in India as a whole. Also, in terms of our economic policy, we really want to foreground the working people, the peasants, the workers, uh, that they will be at the forefront uh, of our uh, economic policy. We do want uh, investment. We are open uh, to investment both by uh, domestic entrepreneurs and by foreign investors. But we don't believe in giving special privileges to particular industrial houses. That is quite the wrong way to go. We want to create a level playing field of incentives for those who are prepared to do honest business in our state and in the rest of India. So both in terms of our ideology and our economic priorities, we offer a distinct alternative to the party which appears to be the front runner in terms of the number of seats that any party might get uh, in the forthcoming elections. Professor Bose, while you've expressed your points as far as, uh, you know, BJP and the prime ministerial candidate of the BJP, Narendra Modi, is concerned, uh, you've also been uh, quoted as saying that you agree with what Amartya Sen has said, uh, or you second his view uh, that he should perhaps not be the prime minister. He, you would not like to see him as uh, the prime minister of uh, India. But why is it then that you, you know, if you see globally whether, uh, you know, there are top research reports, etc., all uh, sort of pointing out in favor of him and probably looking as if he would bring some sort of change to India? Why is that kind of impression uh, being built otherwise uh, globally? You know, there is a huge advertising campaign uh, and a media campaign that is uh, being conducted uh, by the two rich parties uh, uh, in this uh, country. And uh, therefore, uh, naturally, uh, there's an attempt to give the impression uh, as if the election is over even before the first uh, vote uh, has been cast. Uh, and so people are taking an interest in someone who appears to be the front runner. But as you know, even today, uh, the economist uh, has uh, expressed a view uh, on uh, the prospective uh, prime minister uh, of the BJP, uh, which is not very favorable. Uh, now, uh, naturally, uh, there are members of the party who are upset uh, by the fact uh, that a foreign news magazine, uh, although albeit a prestigious one, has expressed that, uh, that kind of view. I would trust the people of this country uh, to deliberate very carefully in the, these historic elections and give us a verdict uh, that India deserves, uh, that India, which is such a rich tapestry of so many different religious and linguistic communities, can be proud of. And I will therefore leave the last word uh, to the voters of this country. Professor Bose, uh, you know, as far as uh, the polls go, most of the polls, and then let me shift the focus to West Bengal, and most of the polls uh, currently, uh, you know, give an impression that, uh, of course, Trinamool Congress is far ahead uh, in terms of the upcoming Lok Sabha elections are concerned. However, uh, on, the, on the other hand, of course, as far as left is concerned, their numbers seem to have come down. Uh, meanwhile, there also, uh, you know, reports and experts do point out that BJP too have fielded very strong candidates, don't know if they'll be able to make uh, any headway there, but of course they have put a tough competition. How do you see West Bengal uh, really uh, unfolding in the upcoming elections? The Trinamool Congress will win big uh, in the state of West Bengal. Uh, the BJP's uh, ideology is completely out of sync uh, with the traditions, both the political and cultural traditions of Bengal. And therefore, the BJP will not be able to make any headway in this state. And as for the CPIM, uh, that party will be the main contender of the Trinomul Congress. But they are, at the moment, uh, bereft of ideas. They are drifting. They are practically leaderless. Uh, and therefore, uh, the Trinomul Congress 
uh, will do extremely well. I'm not relying on the polls that one watches on television, but simply by being here, by interacting with ordinary common people in Bengal. I have no doubt that uh, Trinamool Congress will win very big in Bengal, and it will certainly emerge as the third largest party in uh, the 16th uh, Lok Sabha. But we are prepared to be very generous. We naturally would like to see uh, our leader as the prime minister, but we will keep the interests of the country in mind, and we will talk to other like-minded uh, regional parties. You know, even the BJP is a regional party of the west of the country and parts of the north. Uh, you know, uh, they may claim to be uh, a national uh, party. We may be a regional party, but we have a national perspective, and uh, we have some views on what kind of India we would like to see in the future. And we hope that Bengal will be able to light the path uh, towards India's political future. Sure, Professor Bose, but this is the 42 seats that we are talking about. And if you are, as you uh, are very confident that, you know, TMC would be uh, the front runner, you are absolutely ruling out any sort of post-poll alliance that may come uh, in, with regard to any of the big political parties or the national so-called political parties, do you debate that? But any of the two national political parties seeking those numbers uh, to make a mark in form of gov uh, forming a government in the center? We will actually want to talk to other powerful uh, regional parties who share uh, our view uh, about building a new kind of a federal center. We cannot uh, support uh, the Congress, which has been tainted by corruption uh, and has just not governed in the last few years. We have serious ideological differences with the, the BJP, and not just on the question of secularism, even on the question of what the economic priorities should be uh, of this uh, country and of the next government. So we will, in the first instance, talk to like-minded regional parties, which we expect will do very well in certain parts of the country. Well, all the best, uh, Professor Bose, for uh, the upcoming elections and as you, as you contest, contest from the Jadhavpur constituency in West Bengal for the Trinamool Congress. Well, and thank you so much and appreciate you sharing thank your thoughts you. with us. Well, that's all we have on this edition of Political Capital. Thanks for watching.